Hi, Liz. Hi, oh. Viewer discretion is advised. So, you prefer that I do this talk in Russian or in English? Uh, yellow, blue, angular. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't know what. <laughs> so, okay, so we'll do it in English. This is the default choice. Uh, so we'll talk about the magic of angular dependency injection. Uh, before we start, I want to thank Wix for setting up this whole event and the beers and the pizzas. Uh, Wix, uh, I have a lot of friends at Wix. We have a, it's an Israeli company, uh, and it's uh, one of the coolest companies in, in Israel, just so you know. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind, principles are more important than syntax. This talk will be half about the principles, the programming principles behind it, behind dependency injection, and the ha later half is about Angular. So it's, it's okay if you don't know Angular. Um, and stop me if something isn't clear. Don't be shy, raise your hand, ask me, or just yell, shy, it isn't clear, okay? And I will stop and explain. Okay, so who am I? Uh, I'm shy, and uh, I'm an AngularJS consultant, so I worked with uh, 15, over 15 companies in the past two years, uh, enterprise companies, and got the chance to see a lot of products written in Angular. So, uh, and I also started recently uh, an online training site called highres.io, and you're welcome to join. Uh, you can uh, enter your email and I will send free videos and, and stuff like that, and also invitations. Uh, I run the JavaScript Israel meetup group in Israel. So, it's uh, about uh, 1,300 people, and we talk about JavaScript, how geeky of us. Uh, and uh, also the Google Developer Group in, uh, in one of the cities in Israel. And we uh, recently did the first Ang Angular conference, NGCon, uh, in Israel. Also a lecture in universities and stuff. Uh, I'm also an entrepreneur, got another meetup group called Talking Lean, talking about lean startup and entrepreneurship. And as a hobby, I'm an improvisation performer. So doing uh, whose line is it anyway stuff and uh, just for a hobby. Okay, that's me. What's on today's menu? So we are going to talk about what is modular code? What is dependency injection and why use it? Um, ne next, we're going to move to Angular DI implementation, dependency injection implementation, and uh, Angular modules, and the services API, how you can define services and stuff. Okay, so why dependency injection? Uh, let's take a real use case, a real life use case, okay? So I want to arrange a meetup. You can't really have meetup without pizzas, as you just uh, see. So this was in the ng-conf, we did the AngularJS pizza, okay? Um, so you can't have pizza without flour, right? It's not the same without wheat, and great, now I need to plow a field to get the wheat. So you, you're getting where, I, where I'm going with this. Um, I just want a pizza for my meetup. Why do I need to know all these things? So the old school solution, what, we, what people used to do where, when they started programming is use one big ass file, <laughs> okay? So everything in the same file, thousands and thousands of lines of code, everything you need to know is in it. And uh, just an example, if I want to meet up, I have to plow the fields, harvest wheat, grind flour, everything, then return pizza plus people plus lecture, and I get a great meetup. So yeah, this was the procedural coding the old uh, way, this is uh, an example for actual object. Build HTTP, get member list, notify members. Now I have the function inside the same thing. So you get the point. I'm building everything in one big file. So for that, you people understood that large apps mean means com complexity. So um, what's the solution they came about? It's not new. It's like. Uh, 40 years old or something. Modular code, okay? Divide your code into modules. 
Um, this is totally professional definition, okay? Really, really professional. A module is a separate interface piece of code that does stuff you need, okay? So, yeah, it's not professional, it's I written it. Uh, so, what does it mean? So, a model is basically just something with an interface. You have a code, you put it away, you make an interface or give it like a proper API and then you can use it and don't have to use it in your big S file, okay? So this is a module, so you break into modules. But rules are required. When working like this, you need to follow the rules, okay? Watch out, theory. Now we're getting into the why use it. Main thing, separation of concern. Who heard about this term here? Okay, <laughs> like it's like a wave in soccer. Okay, so uh, separation of concern is a very, very um, important concept to, to understand when working in a modular application. What does it mean? <laughs> Wikipedia says that, I will read it fast. Uh, a program that embodies separation of concerns well is called a modular program. Modularity and hence separation of concerns is achieved by encapsulating information inside a section of code that has a well-defined interface. Encapsulation is a means of information hiding. Okay, this all bunch of gibberish means that Basically, if you have a large code, separate it into clear modules and make sure any module knows the least it can about the others, okay? So he doesn't know anything about his surrounding. This is a very important concept in modular programming. So examples, object-oriented, okay? We used to have biggest files, then... Uh, <laughs> And people came out, uh, up with the idea of object oriented, okay? Let's separate it to objects. Also MVC that you hear about, okay, in frameworks and stuff. Model view controller, let's separate each layer of our code to have a, a responsibility of a different concern. The view layer, the model layer, the controller layer are all dealing with different issues. Also service oriented architecture and also what you know, JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, which we all know, it's a separation of concerns, right? The CSS is for the uh, wild stuff in the, in the view, and uh, JavaScript is all the logic. So this is also an example for it. Okay, more rules. Are we ready? More theory and stuff before we get to the syntax. So we have the single responsibility principle, means that each module that you divide have one responsibility. So, if I'm a pizza creator, I need to know how to create pizzas. Know how to create pizzas and go to the server and call up my friend and all these other things. I need just to do one thing. Multitasking is best, okay? So, um, you can ask yourself, what if I'm a higher level object that needs to call uh, a lot of, uh, of things? So, this is called a abstraction layers and I need to have responsibility in my abstraction layer. So I don't go to uh, uh, lower layers and such, I stay in my level, okay? It's a more com uh, complicated concept to, to explain, but you should read about it and, and learn about it. Also, another concept that you should learn about is the load of the meter, which means if, I'm inter if I have object that I'm talking to, I want to stay in the surrounding layer that I'm talking with. So uh, things like if I'm having uh, an Ajax object that give me data and he has a dependency on another object, I can't talk to this object, the second one. I need to stay in my boundaries, okay, of my dependencies. So no uh, Ajax object don't get another object dot apply some function, okay? It's like uh, having, a, I don't know, if I'm a pizzeria and I'm dependent on a supermarket, okay, for a tomato sauce, 
So I depended on the supermarket. And the supermarket is dependent on the tomato sauce factory, okay? So I, as a pizzeria, doesn't need to call the tomato sauce factory, okay? I need just to talk with the supermarket. Unless the supermarket is shitty and I need to go past them. But you get the point, okay? Um, so this is the law of the meter. Another metaphor is when I'm walking a dog, I, don't, I just need to walk the dog. I don't need to make sure every leg is working and moving forward, right? So this is the law of the meter. Also, that the dumber your components are, the more maintainable your code is. So what does it mean? It means that your code, your model, should know the least it can. So being modular means having dependencies. Like I said, if I'm a pizzeria, I have a dependency on a supermarket. So what I showed you before, these are, these are all dependencies. Okay, I need this to create this, to create this, to create this. Okay, but as a meetup organizer, I, I, I got enough headaches. All I want is, is a pizza, okay? Uh, and a pizza that tastes good. This is the interface I want. I don't care, I don't really care where it comes from. I don't, I don't care if it's from the, this pizzeria, I just want it to taste good. Okay, this is the concept basically of what we're talking about. So, writing modular code. So first of all, we divide pieces of code into objects. Okay, I have the pizza, which encapsulate everything, like the wheat and the grind and everything like that. We put it in one object and we talk only with this object. For, then we create a builder for this object, okay? Like you know from classical programming, a class. Okay, how to build this uh, object. In JavaScript, you also have this notion, but you can just put an object, okay? Um, so we create this builder. I call it a builder because it can be also a factory, like the factory pattern. Um, then we create a meetup object. Then we couple them together, okay? Just want, want us to talk about different uh, types of coupling, okay, or couples. Ah, this is, yeah, weird, okay. Um, so, the first type of coupling is uh, tight coupling, okay? We have a meter, and then he needs a pizza. So, we create a new pizza, right? Like a new class, a new instance of the pizza function class in JavaScript. And then the pizza tastes good, awesome. Not really, okay? <laughs> Why? Because it's forcing me to know how to create a pizza. Now I need to know how to create which pizza specific to call. It tied the cover to the implementation class. I need to know this specific pizza. What if I want a different implementation of the same interface? What if it's another pizzeria, okay, which does a better pizza, okay? I now need to know only this pizza. And to unit test it, how many of you uh, are unit testing the code, your code? Wow, better than I expected. Good for you guys, okay. So um, to test the code, you need to monkey patch the pizza, right, class. You need to replace it and then remember to clean it after the test. It gets really, really messy. So. It's like having the pizzeria with you in the meetup, okay? Which is a cool thing if you're in the meetup, but not in your code. Okay, so the, the second solution is to use a, what's called a service locator. So I need a pizza, I just call the global object or something like that, and he fetches the pizza. Okay, and then I get it's a much better solution than the new class syntax, but Everyone in the system needs to know about the locator, okay? Everyone, everyone, every object needs to know, have this dependency on the locator. And, and when you look at the code, this is a simple one, but uh, when you look at the code, you, don't, you can't really tell if it's a large like, object, which uh, dependencies does it have? Because you see like, like a, any Node developer, Node.js, here, one, two, <laughs> okay, three. So you have the require, okay? You require some file and then 
And when you look at uh, one, 200 lines of code, you see like it's scattered all over and you can't really figure out which one until you have a bug and then you figure out that the, it needed the Ajax service or something like that. So, okay, it's like having an annoying assistant. Okay, with you in the meetup, everyone have of you have an annoying assistant that's like uh, bugging him. Okay, I don't know if, uh, about the example, but I just wanted to put uh, this gift. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, so the third solution is to use a constructor uh, injected to, into the constructor. So the module itself or the object doesn't know anything about how to get the dependency. Just it gets injected into its constructor. So you get already what you need. You don't know which implementation is it. You just know that it tastes good. And in JavaScript, we don't really have interfaces, right, like uh, other languages. But we have duct typing. We don't have types, okay? So we don't really need uh, an interface here. We can just call the function, and if it is there, it would get called, okay? Uh, it's not that I'm against interfaces, it just uh, isn't the same paradigm. So it's easier for testing, for unit testing, you can just pass a mock object to the constructor and it will have the taste good method and you can spy on it and see how many times it got called and stuff. Um, and in, you can see in one place all of the dependencies, okay, not scattered around the code. You you can see, okay, the meetup need pizza and speaker and, I don't know, beers and stuff, okay? So it's like having a pizza delivery. Wait, this could be cooler. Like having a pizza delivery, okay? It's much cooler. But if we're going to implement it in that way, it's not enough. Because if we have a main method of our program, you see, if we want a meetup, we need a new meetup that needs a new pizza. It means the new flower. So we inject it, but basically we have everything in the main method, which is ugly and not cool. So uh, why? Because too much knowledge is in one place. Okay, we have the main method. Too much knowledge. It knows too much about uh, everything in the program. If we need to change, we need to look at this. I don't know. In large scale application, you get a lot of lines of code, and it doesn't scale. Okay, so it's make it harder to program. So this is why they invented the dependency injection design pattern. What is it? Dependency injection is a software design pattern in which one or more dependencies, services, okay, uh, are injected into a dependent object, client. So a client needs dependencies, he's the client, and he gets services, okay? The pattern separates the creation of the client dependency from its behavior. So I don't know who created it, I just get it. And allows loose coupling and to follow the single responsibility principle. You see, I'm not aligned, <laughs> okay? It's the same thing. So all these uh, all things, this is much simpler for, for dummies like me, okay? I need like this stuff to, to understand stuff. So uh, I have a client, <laughs> want a pizza, you have an injector which is outside of it, outside, it's a component of the system, of the framework, that uh, gets the call. He has a magic bag of service creators that knows how to create the instance. So he, he asks for a pizza creator, he gets the pizza creator, he uh, creates a pizza and injects it into the client. This is the whole mechanism of in dependency injection. So a system without a dependency injection is like uh, many laptops with wires coming out of them, okay? So <laughs> think of a laptop with every single USB, mini USB, micro USB, and everything. Um, so now let's go over to Angular, um, finally. So in order to speak about the dependency injection, we need to know a little bit about Angular, about the Angular components. So we have controllers. I'm not going into, and it, this is not an intro to, to Angular. You, uh, you're supposed to like know the different components, but it's okay. If, if you, it's something unclear, just shout at me, okay? 
Uh, you have controllers, you have directives, and you have filters. This is the API. You can type like controller and define a controller and stuff. Factory service provider value and constant. Okay, this is the, the, the components you can define in Angular. So what are these? The first three are non-injectable. So you can you can inject a controller into something. You can inject a filter or a directive. You can inject them to other components, okay? But the second uh, group is are, are in fact injectables. So they are called service creators. So you create with them the definition of a service and that ser service will get injected into the controller, into the directive, into the filter and into each one of these except the lowest uh, two, the value of the constant. Uh, so you can inject them into other objects. Um, so what are services well, in Angular? So this is like a really, really basic Angular code, but really basic, it's not like this in the real application. You have a controller, which is called my control. The second argument, it's always a function over array, we'll see that. And in the function argument, I just tell him, listen, I need a pizza, okay? I don't care where you get it, I just need a pizza. And then he gives me a pizza. He does the two string on the function and knows to analyze what I asked for. And he will, as, as long as I defined what is a pizza before, he will give me that pizza. So it's real, very, very awesome. The best practice is to use an array notation and to give it a string name. Okay, and then inject just the, the argument in the same order. Why? Because usually in large apps, you will use this uh, dot notation to, it's like packages in other languages. You would use like a, to not run over other stuff. So this is a, a better solution. It's the same thing. You ask for where is a pizza, and then uh, you, ask, uh, you give it an argument, and then you can use it. It's the same thing. Okay, so a service. So we talked about it. It's injectable, can be injected into other components. It's a singleton, okay? So it means that it's only one instance. When you define it, you can't rely on it to be multiple instances and everyone, every instance have its own state, okay? So it's only one instance. Uh, so it's, it's good for sharing stuff or caching stuff or sharing between components, but you can rely on new instances. Um, it's get created by a provider's get method. Okay, so this is, I know, it's a big statement, okay, for, especially for uh, people who don't know Angular. Um, what does it mean? You remember when I showed you the dependency injection uh, mechanism and it needs a service creator, right? So this is a provider. Basically, we'll see what's a provider. Think of a provider as another object, okay, that provides that creator of that service. So with three parts, you have an object. It has a dollar get method inside of it. That's it, okay? And when you call that Angular behind the scene, call that dollar get, and, it, and that dollar get creates a service, and that service will be the instance. We'll, we'll see how it, uh, how it does it. But this is a provider. It gets confusing because you think of a provider, you get confused with the factory and all of the stuff. Uh, but this is the, the, the main definition of it. And it can be configured. So if you're creating a singleton by a factory method, the dollar get, you can configure it before the Angular, uh, Angular starts uh, running. Okay, starts the actual running. Uh, it has a config stage and you can configure your uh, pizza factory with the uh, parameters and then when he creates the instance, he knows about this configuration. We'll see. So the injection process. Think of it of what we saw, okay? We saw a function that wanted the pizza, right? So the injector gets an injection request, okay? I want a pizza. 
it searches the service instances cache. So if it already created, he put it in a map, right, in another object. And then he look, look up uh, in this map. If it's not, not there, uh, he look up in the relevant provider. So what he does, he has two maps. He have the uh, service maps and the provider map. And he, uh, when he creates a provider, when he creates a service, he creates those two, two definitions. And he adds a provider with the large P to the name. So if I define pizza, I get a pizza with a big P provider, OK? Pizza provider with a big P. So this is how we store stuff. So if you get like errors and stuff, if you can't find a pizza provider or something like that, this is why. Um, so then when you get provided, he called it get method. Okay, and then you get the instance and save the result to the same instance cache. And then you inject it to the client. I know, complicated, let's go to the... <laughs> so we have the injector, we have the services cache which the instance cache, the data control. We have the provider's cache. So when I run okay, a function that this uh, run method can have a function that I can inject stuff to, so I need the pizza service, it then uh, the injector gets the, like when you try to, to run it, it gets uh, invoked, and then it searches the pizza service in the services cache by the name. Okay, if he doesn't find it, he moves to the provider's cache, cache and, and look up pizza service provider. Then gets it and call its $get method and put the result in the services cache, cache and then inject it uh, to the function. But later, the second time, he will find it in the services cache and then just bring it. Okay? This is why it's a singleton. It's only one instance. Okay? And get called by the first time. So um, you can create provider definition using the Angular modules. This is another thing you need to understand about, about Angular. Okay, you ju just can't create like a out of context. You need a module, an Angular module, to create of its API. So what is an Angular module? This question um, gets asked a lot by starting developers in, in Angular. Or even people who didn't work with modules that, that much because it get confusing. So it's not like because it's not like the formal module definition that I told you about before. You can a better name for it is a definition container. So think of, of an object that have all of the definition that I showed you before, the controller, the directive, everything gets queued up inside of it. Okay, all the definitions. Um, so it's a collection of component definitions, and it's, you th can think about it like a package in, with, of classes. Okay, if, uh, if someone working with another language that has classes, so you can think of a package. When you import the package, you get all the classes definitions, right? And you can create new instances of it. So this is the registry, how it looks behind the scenes. It's more advanced for the starting Angular developer, but you can look at the video later when you get to it and then understand it better. So, you have a, how do you create a controller? Behind the scene, it's called the controller provider. You see the pattern. The controller, dollar controller is the service and the provider is its provider. And it called the register method. This is what you, when you call Angular module stuff dot controller, it calls behind the scene this. So for filter is field pro provider, for directive is the compiled pro provider, and this is all the stuff. So finally we get to what we are talking about, which is the services, which has a lot of different configuration, which basically does the same thing, and it's called the dollar provide factor, uh, factor and stuff. Okay, it's called the dollar provide. It delegates the calls. So we are going to talk only about this stuff. Why? Oh my God. Yeah, so <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be here. Okay, so uh, a life cycle of an application, okay? So uh, when an Angular uh, application starts, it bootstraps 
It's called the bootstrap phase. It's creating the injector, the dollar injector, which is uh, responsible for getting the, all the services. It creates one instance of it and another internal, but it doesn't matter. So you have the dollar injector, and you will see that you have a, a lot of modules, and everyone is talk, talking with the same injector. Uh, it runs the aggregated.configs. So we'll talk about the config, but you can, like I uh, told you before, you can configure a provider to have like a, a starting state. So when the service gets run, it will have this uh, configuration ready. So this is the config configs. Uh, and then after this is the first stage, the second stage, it runs the aggregated run, like I showed you before, run function. So it's like a main method, you can think of it for your Angular programs. So this is the stages. So the config can only inject when you ask for stuff. You can't ask yet for services because they are not alive yet. Okay, you need to uh, only can ask for other providers because it's different stages. And you can ask for constants. We'll see what's a con what the constants is, but you can only ask for these two things just to make sure you don't have collisions. Uh, second thing is, it's a good place to configure a service before it gets instantiated. So we already talked about it. The run method invoked after all the configs uh, executed and can inject services. This is like uh, the starting point of your application. Okay? A good tip for it is for testing, uh, if you're using a run method, don't put like arbitrary code there use like inject a service and call its init function okay so you can test it later because you can't really test run methods okay Mod module dependencies so we talked about that you have angular module okay oh i guess this thing. Uh, <laughs> so you have angular module and you define it by uh, by giving it a name and give it an array of, the, of other modules. So what's, what is happening here, okay? Um, so it starts with an application module. So the first module is always what you put in ng app equals my app, okay? This is the first module. And all of it is dependencies, he can calculate which depends on which, and start with the leaves of the tree, okay? And then run all of, the, uh, all of the, their configs and then all of their runs uh, in the same order. This is how Angular starts the application. And what's a good thing to know about this uh, process is that the less definition wins, meaning that because we're talking about the same provider cache, right, the same injector, the same thing, Although it's different modules, every module, like if you create a service that called uh, uh, my service here and service that called my service here, the last one that gets loaded will run over its former definition. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. Okay, now we're talking about the API, the definition API. So this is the provider, this is how you uh, uh, define a provider, okay? So it's a lot of code, we won't get really into it, okay? Because uh, thanks for the air condition, about time. If you can uh, start it here, it would be great. Uh, <laughs> I'm dying here. So, uh, okay, so the provider. What I told you before, the provider is, is an object with a dollar get method. You see the object, and you see a dollar get method. This method returns the actual service that will get injected here. So I define a provider here and I inject the, its service here. So usually you won't really be dealing with this method. I'm just showing it here just so you will see what it is. But uh, you usually will call it only when you want to config stuff when you're creating your own service and want to expose it as a third party application or something like that you will use this syntax why you wouldn't be using this because you have shortcut methods for doing the same thing 
Angular provides us with the fastest way to do stuff. So you have the factory, okay? And the factory looks the same. You define a user factory. What is a factory, basically? It's a shortcut. You remember the provider? Provider, by the way, can only inject other providers, okay? Like the config method I showed you before. Because it's not the same stage at the uh, life cycle. So you see this function, get the dollar get function, this function that returns a value, it's the same as this function. So it's the same function. Okay? This is the dollar get function. It just shortcuts the process so we can just go to the factory function and just create the service. So this function can inject services like it did here. I don't use it here, but I could. And I return an object. This object will be injected, will get injected here in the controller. You don't see, I, this is a controller definition, this is a factory definition. When I uh, define a user, I can inject it on the controller, and then I can see that the username is Mario, like, like the same, this is the same object, right? So, and here is the config, you see that uh, if I want its provider to configure it, I can add the word provider to whatever name I, I use here, and I will get the, its provider. So, this is the same thing, basically, it does the same thing as the factory, but it's a very, very poor choice of uh, name, because they call it service, which is an overloaded term. So, a service, it should have been called a constructor, because this is what it do, it takes this function, it treats it, you see I added the user with the uppercase uh, u, so it takes the function user, it creates new, and then it returns whatever instance it creates from this constructor. So here I use this dot name, like you use in JavaScript in constructor, right? To give it like the instance, uh, to give the properties. So it's the same thing. You get the same exactly result. So people usually start confused between what's a factory and what's a service. Okay, this is the difference. It just creates a new instance. Um, I usually uh, use the factory method. Wow, okay, and, uh, it wasn't supposed to be awesome. Okay, so uh, value. Um, you have also this method, okay. Uh, it's really dumb, it doesn't have the ability to get injected with anything. What you give after the name, this is the actual value that will get injected later. You can't really put here the dependencies and it will inject and stuff. You can't depend on anything else. It would just get a fun an empty function. Or like here, uh, just the, the string, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, later in the config, if you try to inject it, you will throw an error, okay, like here. And uh, if you use it, you will see five, six, seven, eight. So it's just dumb, okay, just for dumb values that you want to inject. Okay, and then you have a constant which is basically like a value, but the only difference is you can't really run over it once you define it like a constant, okay? Once you define it, if you try to define it again, it will throw an error. And you can inject it, that, the other difference, is you, you can't actually inject it in the config phase. So if you need stuff that will be like values that you need to replace and such, you have this ability, like, an API key in the system, in our uh, development system in, or, or in our production system. And you can inject it like you do in the controller and other injectable function. Okay, last uh, slide with code, <laughs> okay. Um, so for unit testing, for those of you who test the code, this is how it looks. This is Jasmine, but you can choose any framework. Um, and Angular supplies us with uh, magical global functions that shortcut uh, the way to all this injection mechanism. So they provide the module function and the inject function. So module, it just loads up the definitions. If I want a controller that is connected to a different, uh, some module, I can load this module and then I get access to it 
by using the inject. So first I need to uh, load the module, and then I can inject it to a function and get it in the test. So I can expect that the API key will be one, two, three, four, and then I can uh, test all of the service layer in Angular. I can inject stuff and test them or mock stuff up. So lazy loading, how to lazy load your code, okay? Um, it's very simple. We have a GitHub project called OC Lazy Load, okay? Which covers everything you need, okay? You have a, an API, you can lazy load it. What, what does it mean, lazy load? Is the Angular model system don't load files. You need to take care of the file loading yourself, but it does work out like the order of which model need to load before which, which is dependent on which. So lazy loading is the loading on the actual file when you need it. So if you have a large app with uh, three sections, like a car selling uh, section and an apartment selling section, and you're in the car, you don't want to load all the parts of the apartment selling, right, the exchange. So when you, the user click this tab, then only then it will load all the modules and definition and stuff. So Angular doesn't support it from the start. You have like a hack that you can do and this uh, project does it. Why didn't I go into it? Because if we're, let's talk about the future of Angular, okay? Angular depends injection 2.0, what they want to implement inside the 2.0 version. Currently it's 1.3, this is the version of Angular. Um, they will use ES6 modules. Okay, anyone heard about the uh, ES6 modules? Okay, anyone heard about ES6? Okay, Harmony, it's the same thing. Okay, so uh, ES6 is the next version of uh, JavaScript, and it will have this concept of lazy loading files, and not everything in, uh, in script, and you will know which, depends on which, the Angular DI, uh, the next version. Uh, no more two strings. So what I showed you that he knows, like you have two versions, the simple one and the array one. So the simple one we no longer exist because they figure out it's not the best practice. And it will be not only for singletons, you can inject or request instances. And the good news, it already exists. It's on GitHub, you can uh, experiment with it, and this will be the future of Angular JS dependency injection mechanism. So, what have we learned? Uh, Why using a, a DI system, okay? I hope I, uh, I convince you that it's a good thing. Um, how Angular implements dependency injection. Chai loves pizza, and uh, pizza delivery guys can be attractive, <laughs> okay? So uh, if you want to learn more about architecture and stuff, you can visit my site, you can register, uh, just mailing list and stuff. Like I told you, spam every day, it's uh, fun. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> so this is uh, all my details, if you want, and this is the link for the, this slide. Okay, so if you have any questions, this is the time. Everyone wants to go home, huh? Okay. What about the uh, yeah. uh, that you said that uh, they would have uh, not only singletons, but uh, many instances? How easy it would, uh, it would be to manage many instances? So it's a good question. The question was uh, if it's not only singleton, if it's inst instances, how would it be easier to manage? Uh, the answer is that I don't really know. I never tested it and I never play with the concept of uh, services as an instance. Usually I inject like a factory and then create instances. Of. So um, it's a good question. We need to see it when we start working with it, how, if it will affect our uh, process. Okay? Yeah? yeah? Uh, you said that the module is a container for our company. Mm -hmm. uh, in Angular? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. I've got an application, of my app, and uh, in my app I've got a settings, and in settings I've got some operation uh, settings. Okay. Uh, how I should it configure it? Okay, so the question was if I have 
uh, several models that models that depended on each other, right? Uh, how do I configure it? So, like I like I showed you, you have the uh, uh, module definition. You give it a name and then an array. When you when you give it an, an array, each one of the modules need to have the the next one in its array. So Angular reads everything, and only after it reads everything that got loaded, he know how to figure out which one should be loaded before the other one. Uh, is it answer your question? Okay. Okay, so before we work things up, we're all going to uh, the loft, right after it. So for an after party, like a crazy one. So you want to join us, uh, you're welcome. And thank you very much. For that. Lo único que todos éramos